Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrets It, Brexit Britain. I know that it's the United Kingdom. And I also know, right, that the British expats are really immigrants or migrants. In some cases, even refugees. But you see, welcome back to Regrets It, Brexit United Kingdom doesn't work. Brexit Britain does. Alright. <laughs> also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you for all your messages you sent me and a special thanks here to everyone who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can, but I will like all your messages for definite. So, overnight, we've had um, Sean Bailey resign. Or as I like to call him, token bailey right and if you see the picture right if you see the picture that has come out that, that come out of, of overnight right would you you'll understand why i call him token first of all right and then you just think to yourself you know i always say right i'm always telling you guys right that these tories are stupid they are stupid people Right? This is the thing with them. These are really, really stupid people. Now, you've got to admit that now. Today, you've got to look and say, oh, hold on, why are you saying this? I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Because I'm going to speak as a black man. If I was in that situation as a black man, yeah, my black ass would never be nowhere near that picture. I'd be taking the picture. <laughs> But I would never be in it. Right? Because you know what? I would know that my career is finished. If that picture ever comes out. One picture speaks a million words. And I would know my career right then would be over. If that picture ever comes out. And even right, in my inebriated state. right, I would know the f I need to be as far away from that camera as possible is which is the reason why i'd be holding the motherfucking camera right <laughs> and the only pictures on there of me right would be selfies right because it would be my camera and it'd be in my pocket <laughs> right? so there'd be no no one sharing a picture of me right so when people say yeah well sean bailey was at the party they'd be like hmm? what? what did you see him in the pictures no Right? Because let me tell you, right, I'm going to speak as a black man. We have different rules. Our rules are different. Our rules don't say, you know what, we can act like how Boris Johnson would act or Matt Hancock, right, or any one of these people who know to themselves, you know what, I can hold on to my job. Right? Worst ways, I can just stay. I can just stay. Right? Matt Hancock only had to go because you know what? Too much things had come out. Just too much. One one thing too much. Right? And that's when he had his you know, if it wasn't for the fact that he had his hands all over that that, you know, his his, his aid, right, then you know something. Right? Matt Hancock would still be there. He'd still be there, right? He'd still be the man who's, you know, who's <coughs> Sorry about that. It'll still be the man who has given his um, pub landlord right, a multi-million pound contract. He'd still be that man. Do you know what I mean? He'd still be the man who was on who was on the TV with very dry tears right, on the day when they brought the vaccine out. <laughs> I don't know, right? But he looked like he was crying sand. <laughs> right? But Sean Bailey right, cannot act in that way. Right, and if you see Tolkien, right, in the middle of the picture, right, and you can't, no one can ever say, right, you know something, all this was, right, was just like, you know, after they'd finished work, right, they just had a little, a little gathering, you know, a couple of drinks, they'd been working together all day, they just had a couple of drinks together, do you know what I mean, someone, someone nipped down to Tesco's and got a, got, got a few bags of booze, right, or they might have went to Sainsbury's and got the nibbles, Right, or they could have went to Morrison's, right, and got the crisps, right. But so, but people went out and they got no. There was catering, proper professional catering. 
right? The, the food, you know, the food there is still good now. <laughs> I, still, I, mean, I, looked at, I, still, I was hungry when I looked at that. I'm still hungry about it now because I could see some salmon and all them things there up in there. Do you know what I mean? Right? So, so yeah, so this, uh, unfortunately for Sean Bailey, right? Now, I do always say, yeah, that black and Asian Tories are thick. Some of the thickest black people, in fact, the thickest black people out there, right? Because they're voting against their own interest, right? But a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them back in the day, yeah, would have been known as something called the um, House Negro. That's what they would have been, right? And that's why they think. That's why they think to themselves, you know what, yeah, that I'm going to go against. Right, my natural instincts, right? Because as, as a black person, your natural instincts surely can't be to be with the racists. That can't be your natural instincts, right? Unless you're some type of psycho, <laughs> right? So they, so, so what they do is they just go against their natural instincts. Do you know what I mean? And and what they do, right, is they make um. They're going to the, they're going to that the Tories like Sean but someone like Sean Bailey right will go into the Tory party and they legitimise it. That's what they do. They they go in there and they make it legitimate and they you know and 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 um so that so that someone like Boris Johnson can say oh well look, <laughs> look at my uh, front bench never been more diverse. Right, where he sat there next to Pretty Patel right, who's virtually a National Front member. Her dad, you know, her dad's a UKIP man, so, you know, right? So, you know, you know, so those type of black and Asian people, right, they're always, we, you know, we, we just call them the gatekeepers. That's what we call them, the gatekeepers. And you can understand, you can understand why that is, but that's what we just call them, do you know what I mean? Right? But as I said, yeah, Sean Bailey, right, has resigned overnight because his ass has been caught out really, really badly, right? And this party happened in, I think it's um, Tourist um, Central or whatever it was. Do you know what I mean? You know, people doing Christmas jumpers and everything. But anyway, today we have hit the highest inflation for 10 years. You know say, I wonder why that is. I wonder if that could be a combination right, of Brexit right, and putting a clown in charge of the country. It's the highest inflation in 10 years. Since 2011. <laughs> you see? This is, this, these are all the things that, that we feared. Everything in this country under Boris Johnson is the worst. Uh, you know Tesco's has got like a finest range. right? They should just make up a range for Boris Johnson called the worst. Right? We've got shortages of everything. Everything is in shortages, whether it's drivers, whether it's food, whether it's space in the ports, everything is in shortages. The only thing that's not in shortages is shortages. We have no shortages of shortages. Right? Seriously, do you know what I mean? You know, me, yeah, I'm, I, listen, I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm having a right laugh about this because, you know, I, you know, I can actually live. I can actually live under Tory under Tory government. I don't like to, but do you know what I mean? You know, it's. But I know a lot of the working class, right, and the benefit Tories. They can't afford to live under this shit. I know they can't afford to live under this shit, and it must be really pain in their ass right now. Just really, really hurt. You know, a woman the other day, yeah, and I feel quite ashamed of myself for this, and I shouldn't be telling you this, right, but. The other day she phoned the radio and she was speaking about her dad, right? And she's and she was saying how much this man, right, was behind Boris Johnson, right? And um and then she said something about um how much Boris was was, was messing up, right? And uh, her dad had died. Right at which stage I burst out laughing I thought and I stopped myself and I thought, Oh my god, that's terrible. Right, but you know, it's just you know, this is the thing with this is the thing with um, with how this country has been 
right, under under Boris Johnson, because all of this was all warned about. Right? And you know, when you've got those people, yeah, who are phoning the radio and you're listening to them and you think to yourself, my God, can these people not see what I can see? I don't understand. I don't understand why they can't see what exactly what I can see. Right? I can't see that Boris Johnson has done one good thing throughout his premiership. Not one good thing. Right? The best thing Boris Johnson could have done right, was to not pull Britain out of the EU. That would that would have been the best thing he could have done, right? Because every single thing he's done, right, has just taken this country down. It's taken it further and further down, right? Highest inflation figures, right? You know, social care is falling to pieces, right? Our farming, you know, farming is just it's been destroyed. It's just been destroyed. Right, our ports. I'm going to speak about all this in a little while. Do you know what I mean? But you know, all of these things, right, have been just been completely destroyed by Boris Johnson, right? And you know, you've got so many people still. I don't understand. I don't understand how good this Kool Aid must be, right? That these people have drunk to still be back in Boris Johnson. I just don't understand it. I can't understand how you can't look and see see all of this. Do you know what I mean? You can't look and see this man has stolen all of this money that has been stolen from this country right? and just dished out amongst their friends. Amongst their friends. Right? Hammersmith Bridge right, has been closed for how many years? Right? You know, round that way, right, it must be a fucking nightmare for those people because that bridge is closed. Right? You know, something that, you know, something that might have taken you, you know, three or four minutes right now it's half an hour 45 minutes because you have to go all around a different way to get to to get to you know to, it's unbelievable right but they could steal 37 billion pounds right pretending they t pretend they're spending it on an app right and you've got hammersmith bridge has been closed for how long hmm. how long has hammersmith bridge been closed for Right. Seriously, right. I can't understand how these people are getting away with this. Right. You know, they're you know, snorting more cocaine up in the House of Parliament right, while kids are going hungry and footballers having to, you know, having to have campaigns right, to feed children while they're all snorting cocaine in the House of Parliament. And you know already, right, that these guys have got a club. You know that, right? right? People who have snorted cocaine in like in Downing Street. Trust me on this. Because that's how that shit works. People have snorted in the House of Parliament, the House of Lords. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? You know, the the you know the the, the closer you could get that shit to government, right? Some of them probably have got pictures of themselves doing that. Right, doing stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? You know, snorting coke in the speaker's chair. <laughs> right, you know. Trust me, right. You know, once these guys get going with certain stuff, right, you have to go. You know, people have to go the, as far as they can possibly go. Right. So trust me, there's a little club up in there. What these guys are doing, this type of stuff, right. While the people of this country, right, are suffering, right, and having a really hard time. Right. These guys, who you people have put into power, right, are just laughing at us. Because you know what? They never have cared. The only thing they care about is just the power. That's it. Let's speak about some Brexit, though. Right. So, look, um, let's start with Jacob Rees-Mogg. Because Jacob Rees-Mogg was asked a very important question in the House of Parliament yesterday or the day before about um, how... How basically, how is Brexit going for us? And Jacob Rees-Mogg just come up with like he said he said something about the fish are happier, right? And basically, Brexit is going brilliantly because you know we're opened up to trade this and trade that, and then went off and started speaking about the vaccine, the vaccines. You know what I mean, well, first of all, yeah. Brexit and the vaccines have nothing to do with each other at all, all right? And just can't answer, it just can't answer the question, do you know what I mean? Because none of them could actually give you any um, benefits that we've had so far of Brexit. I mean, he didn't even mention Shell, 
I would have went to, I would have at least went to Shell. I said, well, what about Shell? Yeah. That's what I would have said. I said, and we've sent out an invitation right, to all the Nobel winners to come to a prosperous Great Britain to live. None of them haven't taken us up on it yet. But we've still sent out the invitation. You know why we could do that? Because of Brexit. That's why we could do that. Anyway. Right, so <laughs> now we've got um, Tory MP Neil Parrish. Yeah, has warned labour shortages are destroying agriculture. And if it's um twenty five percent, there's a twenty five percent um drop in people planting like um vegetables to obviously to to grow the vegetables for these people of this country. A twenty five percent drop. Right in that, and um, I think it's twelve and a half half percent, right? In um, must be in like meat production or something like that. Drop. That's what I'm saying. So, all of those things now, right, are being obviously they're now being imported, because obviously you know we still we you know we still need vegetables, and we still need the meat products. So, as as what Britain always does. Why don't we just import them? Instead of growing them here. Because for me, this makes perfect sense. You know, like if you you know like if you work like one mile away from where you live, I would say it's better that you drive out twenty miles first of all every morning, right, and then drive back in and then go to work. That would be the best use of your time, if you ask me. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, the um, the agriculture, you know, has been completely destroyed in this country. Right. And as I'm saying, the best thing we can do, right, is import, because surely to import, yeah, that's got to be better than um, growing your own, isn't it? I mean, if you could grow, if you could grow fantastic potatoes in your garden and any time you needed a potato it was there in your garden any time right i would still think yeah that the best use of your time would be you know what to get yourself on a bus go down to the local supermarket right go and grab yourself like six no a 10 kilo bag of potatoes uh, and then get yourself back on the bus and get back home. Because the potatoes in your garden, yeah, they they got all uh, they got all dirt on them. They'll definitely they've got all mud on them. They're all dirty. You don't want those. You want the ones from the supermarket, fresh and clean. That's what you want. Not the beautiful ones you can grow in your garden, right? Where you could just you know just wash that bit of mud off. No. You need them in the bag. Uh, this is the stupidity of the people in this country. Uh, how the hell, uh, oh, you know, the things that we can grow in this country that we're going to import? Import mangoes and kiwis. All right, let, you know what? Let, I tell you what. Let's. In fact, if we do a trade deal with New Zealand, we can get cheap kiwi fruit. Uh, try importing stuff that we can't grow in this country. Why are you importing pork when you're culling, you're, you're culling off all the pigs in your country? Right? Over 20,000 pigs have been culled. These people are importing sausages from Germany. I know the Germans believe that they make the best sausages. Don't know the Germans again. Right? I know you believe they make the best sausages. No, they probably do. Right? But why are we importing all of these things? Right, so this kind of, it's a complete joke, an utter, just an utter joke, but we're still we're still doing it, right? And do you know that the impact, right, of um, Brexit, right, to our trade ports, right, is the lowest in forty years. Now, let me just 
interesting, yeah. What is it that could have happened over four decades ago that could have made this country a wealthy, a much more wealthy country? What could have happened? I don't know. I've got to, I'm going to ponder on that one as to think about what could have happened. <coughs> An MP, Steve Baker. A lot of people like to call him Brexit hard man. I'm like, I looked at him and thought to myself, he doesn't look like no hard man to me. <laughs> I don't know why he's got that name. I have no clue why he's got that name. I know he's pretty stupid though, right? Because this man is, a, you know, he gets most of his information out of the spectator. But do you really, Steve? And you said that on, you said that. I mean, it, it, granted, it was an interview that he was doing while he was on the move. Right, so it's it's not like he was in a sit down studio to do this um to do this interview, right? But you know he is um he's he's one of the chief Brexiters, right? And he is um, and he's a member of the um, ERG, the English Racist Group, right? So he's I, I think he he he's a big wig in, inside there with Jacob Rees Mogg. Do you know what I mean? But you know some of these sometimes yeah, as I, as you know I told you in, in a video yesterday, right? Sometimes the, the wig the week the the face mask drops off of these people right and then they say stuff that's just so stupid right how are you going to go and tell people about you know because the minute you say that the minute you say well you know look in the spectator everyone's going to say well is that where you get all your information from all of your info come on that you know we are simple people right and this is how we think right once you say something like that we're like well so it must be it must be the spectator and Wikipedia is where you get all your information. I don't understand the people who vote for these people. You know, to vote for these people, you have to be more stupid than them because you think that they're a lot smarter than you. Right? So you've got to be even more stupid. You've got to be more stupid than them to vote for them. Fact of the matter. Anyway, guys, this is by any means necessary. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.